The history of Lismore and the surrounding Richmond Valley has been written in the captain's logs of the many ships that plied our river system from the 1800s. It's a history recorded as tonnage of felled timbers, sugarcane, dairy, and the multitudes of passengers that used our rivers as highways in the settlement of this area. The first recorded vessel to the area was in 1842 when the schooner Sally crossed the bar at Ballina with Steve King and his party of cedar getters. For over 100 years until the coming of the railway and the motor lorry, shipping was the lifeline for this district, transporting local produce to mills and processing plants and carrying goods and people to and from Sydney. The general outline of the neighbouring country appeared to be flat open forest on the western bank and thick jungle to the eastward with fine timber. And as you ascend the river, the tea tree, mangrove and swamp oak give place to Morton pines, cedar, yellow wood, palms and gum trees. The banks in general not exceeding 10 feet in height of rich alluvial mould. Word spread quickly about the fortunes to be made logging cedar in this area, and shipping provided the catalyst for the rapid growth in settlers to the region. While a cedar cutter's licence was only $8 a year, the licence did not permit creation of permanent homes at the logging sites. This saw large camps established at Bexhill and Gundarimba, making a passenger service along our rivers essential. During the second half of the 19th century, the rapid development of cattle grazing, sugarcane and timber in the Richmond Valley saw the shipping industry flourish. These primary industries supported a growing economy and population. The development of secondary industries, including shipbuilding, transportation, sawmilling, tallow manufacturing and other associated businesses, soon followed. The settlement of Lismore relied completely on these river highways for the transport of timber, livestock, produce and people. Ships and smaller vessels carried timber to the mills, collected milk from the dairy farms and took expected mothers to hospital for childbirth. As the region developed, shipping continued to play a vital role as the only way to get goods and people around. Ships progressed from sail, to paddle steamer, and around the late 1800s to coal powered. Our rivers witnessed these transitions and benefited from the efficiencies they brought to commerce and lifestyles in this area. Shipping was, however, a dangerous undertaking, especially crossing the bar at Ballina, where many lives were lost attempting to cross the shallow sandbanks. Despite these tragedies, the navigational obstacles that our rivers presented and the regular flooding, the shipping masters of the day persevered, showing the same bravery and determination 
that was to become the hallmark of our early settlement pioneers. The advent of railways in the mid-50s and the expansion of our road network saw a decline in shipping, with the last freighters taking sugarcane to the Broadwater Mill around 1976. Sadly, this rich history in shipping, so crucial to the development of this region, is all but gone, with only a few remnants still to be seen. What's left of some of the old wharves at Lismore? Bridges with raisable centre spans to allow passage of masted vessels and a cairn at Shores Bay. Visitors to the area might now be very surprised to learn that for over 100 years, the only efficient way to get in and out of Lismore was by river transport. Surprised also to know that Lismore was founded because of its ideal location at the junction of two major river systems, and that Lismore has been a bustling river port for most of its history, 